Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. During this video I'll be showing you how you can make your own door in Unity and be able to open it and close it as you like. So just to show you the final uh, the result of what we're going to be making, when you approach the door and press any button, you'll see that the door opens and vice versa when you press it again, the door closes. So this is what we're going to be making and I'll be showing you how you can do that in hopefully under 10 minutes. Um, so to get started we're going to need a door so I've used a cube and kind of stretched it around um, to look like a door. So I just created a cube like that, reset the transform and stretched it uh, as I liked, look like a door. So I'm not going to uh, pay too much attention to it. And then added another parent object for this door because you can see I have a mesh and the actual door. The door holds the functionality of the store and the mesh just uh, has the visual effects and the actual collider that uh, the player is going to be colliding with so if i were to deactivate the mesh this will disappear entirely so the door is holding uh, the functionality script and the trigger to know if the player is in range i split them into two uh, for the main reason of that i wanted to have the pivot point on the edge of the door so i'm going to be able to rotate it around like this and it will make my life easier in order for you to do that, you need to change a slight tool right here. You can see on the top left corner of this scene panel right here, there is this tool that has pivot and center. If you place it at the center, if you were to have a child and an object, it will have the center at the uh, center point right here. So if I were to change it to center, you'll see that the door is now has the pivot in the center of this um, kind of mesh. This uh, objects. So if I go to rotate it, you'll see that it rotates as a pivot point from the center. Instead, I want it to uh, have it from the pivot of where exactly is my door uh, right here. So my parent object, I've placed it around this area, then uh, put the child on this uh, next to it. So it has the pivot on the left hand side of this door and allows me to rotate it easily. So that is done for that and make sure to have this setting set to pivot. Um, so we have our door, we need to animate it now. So just get your animation um, uh, panel right here open. And what you need to do is um, create two animations, one for door open and one for door close. And these will be responsible and going to be switching from one another uh, depending on what the player is doing. So for the door open, you want to have the uh, position at the starting. So on this zero here, you want it to be as closed and then as it goes on, you want it to be on the um, where it ends, so 90 degrees on this side. And to actually record the keyframes, you need to first press this red button and kind of change the rotation on the Y axis slightly. So it starts capturing the, um, the movements or the changes and make sure to have this, the parent selected because we're going to be modifying the parent, have the animator on the parent. We don't want to be changing the mesh whatsoever. So leave the mesh alone, have the door or the parent changing and change the Y to be at zero. So you can see that it now tracks it and added a keyframe that is tracking rotation. And then on the 30th, so 0 0.3 around this area or whatever you want, depending on how fast or slow you want the door to be closing, change the uh, rotation to be minus 90 degrees or 90 degrees depending on what orientation you want the door to be rotating towards and this will create a smooth transition from the starting rotation to the end automatically so you need just two two frames and vice versa for the door close you want the opposite so you want the starting position to be where the door is at the open location so minus 90 degrees in my case uh, so set that enable the recording change it to minus 90 on here and then have the uh, on 0 0.3 again set it to 0 on the y axis rotation and this will give you the two animations that we need that will actually uh, perform the rotation the door opening and closing so now that we have the animations we need a place to store them so that is where the animator comes in place so th the animators allows us to kind of switch from one another uh, the two animations easily so open the animator right here and you can see that I have two states, uh, well, three states and the entry. So entry, starting state, door open and door closed. And all you need to do to have them as states is drop 
uh, the door close right like this and the door open and now we have two states that have the animations and also create a new state that is going to be the empty and it's going to be acting as our starting state because if we didn't include this you'll have the animation playing straight away into the game and this is not what we want so ensure to have that and also ensure that the animation clip doesn't have the loop time on because we don't want the animations to be looping so the next thing that we want to have is a parameter so on the left hand side of the animator panel you'll see the parameter and layers go to the parameters and click the uh, plus sign right here and add a boolean and this will kind of track what state is the door at so is it open is it closed and in case this is false it's going to mean that it's closed in case it's true it's open so through that we're going to be controlling what animation should be playing so um, once the starting state is uh, kind of triggered so after getting off the starting state we're going to be bouncing off one another each time we're clicking this is what is going to be happening all the time and it's going to be either one or the other and for the starting state I had my um, door closed so this is the uh, closed version of my door if you have it open you need to set this to be pointing towards the closed and through the parameter that we created here we're able to create transitions so these arrows right here in order to make a transition right click on the state that you want and point on the the state that you want to be transitioning towards and this will create this arrow and you can see there is conditions here that you can add by clicking this plus sign and you can see if I were to click one you can see that I can select the parameter that I want and the state that I want it to be at so in my case I want it to going from the starting state to if it's the door state is true it means that uh, this needs to be opened so we're transitioning to the door open which holds the animation for opening the door and it will actually uh, perform the animation and once we're in this state we're going to be transitioning uh, to the door closed from another transition and in this case we have the condition of the door state being uh, false the door states are um, tracked and changed through a script that I'm going to be showing in just a second so in case the condition is false we're going to be transitioning to the door closed and it's going to be automatically performing the animation and vice versa we have the from the transition from the door closed to the door open where in case the doors the state is turned to true we're transitioning from the door closed to the door open and it's going to perform the animation so hopefully you understood that and if you have a basic knowledge of the animator it's going to make a lot of sense hopefully and now we need to change the door state whenever we uh, actually press the button that we want so that is going to take place into our script. So I have a door script here that has a couple of things. So the first thing is, uh, well, two things. We have two booleans. One is the door state that is going to be modifying the actual state of the animator. Then we have the in range, which is notifying us if the player is in range for in the door uh, to actually open it or close it because we don't want the player to be changing the state of the door regardless of their position. So we want them to be close to change the door state of the door. Then we have the animator, which is a component that we have onto the door here. And we're going to be getting it through the gate component on the start function. So through that, we're getting the animator component. And then we have the on trigger enter and on trigger exit. And if I forgot to mention that, uh, the door, so the parent object has this collider, so this box collider with the is trigger box ticked meaning that uh, this is going to be not be actually blocking the player but it's going to be tracking whether there is the player inside of this green box that we have here and you can kind of modify it as you like and how far you want it to be tracking so i just set it to look kind of like this so in case the box uh, the player is within this box it's going to be tracked as in range and will allow us to actually open the door and so in case it enters through the on trigger, we're going to be checking if the uh, if it's the player that is entering the range, and if it is, we're going to be setting it to true. So the in range to true, and then uh, vice versa when it's exiting, we're going to be setting the in range to false, and we're going to be checking through the update function here if the mouse button is pressed. In your case, you can change it to whatever you want. I'm using the mouse button. You can use any button you like. And also if it's in range. If it is, we're going to be uh, tackling the uh, door state. So simple as that. 
and the door state is a function that I've made which just flips the door state like that and also setting the boolean that we have on the animator to be equal to the door state so this is the entire script if you wanna kind of have a look at it on, uh, from afar and let's have another uh, quick look at it and how it looks so going close to it you can see on the left hand side I'm in the range pressing the click and you can see it opens exiting I'm pressing the click it doesn't open you to be me being out of range entering again closing the door and boom um, hopefully you found this video useful and actually before I go uh, there is something that you may want to be changing because I've noticed it right now and it's the transition so uh, there is a small delay of between the uh, actual click and the door opening or closing and that is because of the settings right here so you may want to be modifying them to uh, reduce the delay so play around with them if you feel like there is a delay and kind of adjust it to what you want anyway um, hopefully you found this video useful and figured out how to make your uh, door in your game uh, thank you for watching have a good rest of your day and goodbye